I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we are going to understand end behavior of a rational function. Question is describe the end behavior of the following rational functions. We have three rational functions here and we'll try to understand their end behavior. I will adopt different ways of finding end behavior and I hope that gives you a variety and also a good understanding of what do we really understand by end behavior. Basically end behavior of a function is that if the x value is very large it could be negative large value which we can say x approaches negative infinity or it could be a positive large value x approaches positive infinity then how does the graph of the function behaves that is kind of end behavior or what happens to the y value of the given function right that is what it means. So what we can do is that we can substitute large values and use a calculator to, to calculate what really happens, right? For example, <clears throat> let's take the first function y equals to 1 over 2x minus 3. Negative large value is like uh, negative 100. Well, negative 1000 is even larger. How about negative 10,000? Okay, so we can substitute x with these values and see what happens to y value, right? Let's calculate. So we'll use a calculator and calculate. So we have 1 divided by 2x minus 3. So that is to say 1 divided by, within bracket, 2 times negative 100. So within bracket, negative 100, bracket close, minus 3, bracket close, equals to so we get minus 1 over 203 in decimals it is 0 0.00949 right so this value for y is let me write y value on this side it is minus 0 0.00 let us say 5 now if I substitute minus 1000 what happens so 1 divided by 2 times minus thousand minus thousand minus three gives me minus four point nine into ten raised to power minus four right so it is even lesser than this so much lesser so what we see really is that as x approaches negative infinity y approaches zero these values are very very small so you can use your calculator and calculate these values now this minus indicates that it approaches zero from the negative side okay now let us substitute large positive values so if I substitute 100 here then what do I get so if I substitute 100 I'll get 1 divided by within brackets 200 minus 3, right? 200 minus 3. This is when I substitute 100. So it is approximately equal to 5.07 into 10 raised to the power minus 3. So it is, y value is 5.07 into 10 to the power of minus 3. So it is approaching 0. So y value is approaching 0, but from the positive side. You see that? So what you can do is you can calculate for let's say 100,000 and 10,000. So what you will notice is that the y value approaches 0, but it is approaching from the positive side. But in any case, what we observe here is that as x approaches minus infinity, y approaches 0. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches 0. 0 is a fixed value, and therefore we say we have a horizontal asymptote, right? So we have a horizontal asymptote and the equation of horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0, right? End behavior is when x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 0, right? Now, there is another term which we will be considering, that is 0 from which direction. So, that negative and positive which I have mentioned here is kind of important. How? If I have to sketch this function, what you will notice is that let us see if I have to sketch this 
then as we saw, as x approaches negatively large values, y approaches 0, but from the negative side, right? But if x approaches positive large values, y approaches 0 from the positive side. Do you see that? So that is, and y equals to 0 is your horizontal asymptote. And this is the behavior at the end, right? It is approaching 0, but from negative side and from positive side. Knowing this behavior helps to graph the function. From the equation, we can find always the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote for us is at x equals to 3 over 2 plus. That means 1.5. So we can draw a vertical asymptote here, right? And since we know we have a horizontal asymptote, which is kind of like this, we are expecting a graph of the function, which should be, which should be kind of like this. You see that? So this behavior helps us to at least see how the function could be, right? Anyway, that's not the part of exercise at present, but it is important to note that how end behavior helps to understand the graph of the function, right? Now let's look into the next function. In this case, we'll again see the end behavior. That means what happens when x approaches negative infinity or when x approaches positive infinity. What value does the function approach, right? That is what we'll see. Now I'll use algebraic approach here. I'll show you algebraically rather than calculating values how we can find our answer. So I can write this function as if I factor x in the numerator, what do I get? Within bracket, I get 7 minus 4 over x, correct? And in the denominator, if I factor x, I get 3 plus 2 over x, correct? Now x and x cancel out, correct? So I can write this function as y equals to 7 minus 4 over x divided by 3 plus 2 over x. Now as x approaches a large value, then 4 over x will approach 0. 2 over x will also be 0, right? Approaching 0, I should say. And therefore, approximately, y will approach 7 over 3. Do you see that? 7 over 3. That is the ratio of these numbers. Do you see that? Or we can say ratio of leading coefficients. Now, one more observation here is the degree of numerator and denominator is same. So x and x will cancel out and we are left with 7 over 3. So end behavior here is that the y value approaches 7 over 3 y approaches 7 over 3 in both the cases, right? So that is what it is. So whether it is approaching from positive or negative side, you can figure out from here. That is to say that if x is very large, then we are taking away a value here, right? Minus. So you can substitute and see that this will be a bit lesser than 7 over 3, right? Because we're taking away a value from here, right? So that's a different story altogether. But at present, what we can notice is that as x approaches positive or negative large value, y approaches 7 over 3. So in this particular case, we say horizontal asymptote is y equals to 7 over 3, since that is the value that the function approaches, right? So that's another way of finding the behavior or the end behavior of a rational function. Right? Now, here also you can see like that. If x is very large, we are dividing by 1 by a very large number. When you divide that, you should get a 0, right? So you're approaching 0. That is the answer, right? Now, in this particular case, which is the third case for us, what you also notice is that the degree of numerator is more than the degree of denominator. Right Now, if I follow the previous method, I could write this as x square. And now let me factor x from the denominator. I get 3 plus 2 over x, correct? Now, this x cancels and we get x over 3 plus 2 over x. Now, if x is very large, then 2 over x, I mean infinitely large, plus or minus, then... 2 over x approaches 0, right? 2 divided by a large number. Therefore, we can have our function as approximately equals to x over 3. Now, if x is large, y is large. That is to say, 
if x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. If x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Do you see that part? So in this case, we do not have any horizontal asymptote. Here, as x increases, increases very high value, y also increases y very high value, right? So in this particular case, the end behavior will be kind of like this. X approaches large value, Y approaches large value, X approaches negatively large value, Y approaches negatively large value, right? Now in this case, I didn't draw the graph. Let me use some space here to sketch the graph itself. So what we noticed here was that the Y value approaches 7 over 3, which is kind of like this, right? Over here, 7 over 3 is 2, 1 over 3, kind of. So what we found here is that the Y value approaches this horizontal line which is y equals to 7 over 3. Do you see that? So that is how we can actually understand the end behavior of a rational function. So you can adopt any method. You can adopt the table of values, plug in the value of x once increasing negatively high and then increasing positively high and see what happens to the y values. Where does it approach? If y approaches a value then we have a horizontal asymptote. We say that the function is approaching that value. In this case, it was zero. Or you can adopt algebraic method where you can factor out x as I did and then see what happens when x is large, very large. Then any term where x is in the denominator will approach zero. So neglect those terms and see what remains. Whatever remains, if it is a valid number, then y approaches that real value. If it is, in this case, infinitely large value, then we say y also approaches infinitely large value. So in the first two cases, we have horizontal asymptote, but whenever the degree of numerator is higher than that of denominator, we will not have horizontal asymptote. So that is what we understand from this particular video. I hope it helps. Thank you.